Seems like it's been a long time since I've talked. Um, I, I want to divide tonight's uh, discussion in two parts. So the first part is something I've wanted to share. And um, how many of you were here Monday night? One, two, any more? Well, Monday night we did walking meditation. It was, it was really nice. The whole room was set up differently. It was all empty. And uh, we did walking meditation, and the three, Bhante Asaji and Bhante Bhadia and Bhante Amita, led the, the uh, presentation on walking meditation, and then we walked. And uh, I wanted to share something. You can do this. You can do this. Uh, what I'm going to share, you can do with it any time. And it's just a way, something you can work with your breath. And it was, it's something that Thich Nhat Hanh wrote and taught. And, you know, Thich Nhat Hanh always has focused a lot on walking meditation. And this is called the Anger Walking Mantra. So it's, it's, we don't have a lot of mantras in uh, Theravada and Buddhism, so we just make them up whenever we can find phrases. So, well, happy, peaceful, that's a good mantra for us. And so, uh, this is, it's, that shouldn't really be called just an anger walking mantra. Any strong emotion. So anything that you're working with that's strong. So what, what are the basic, Todd, what are the basic emotions? Basic. Yeah. Attachment, aversion, Not quite that basic. <laughs> <laughs> So we know we we're always working with emotions, right? Uh, good ones and sometimes not so good ones. They're not, and emotions arise in us. We can't. Uh, we can work with them, but we can't turn them off. You know, we have to work with them. It takes it takes work. So you could instead of anger, you could fill in is sadness an emotion? So sadness. Or uh, is grieving an emotion? Grief. So we can go from anger all the way to uh, sadness, or or go to lust, or go to uh, greed is a good one. You can just lump a lot of stuff under that. If or even if you're thinking about what you're going to have for a late dinner tonight, you could put that into the greed category. You know. So this is just a brief a way to work with your breath. So you can pick your favorite uh, strong emotion. And it's very short. You sh- I'm sure mo- all of you are young enough to memorize it very quickly. Uh, breathing in, I know anger is here. Breathing out, I know the anger is not me. Breathing in, I know anger is unpleasant. Breathing out, I know that feeling will pass. Breathing in, I am calm. Breathing out, I am strong enough to take care of this anger. So we'll, we'll practice it a little bit too. You don't have to stand up, you can do it sitting. But I love those words and I love, because it talks about everything that we're, that we are learning, everything we learn in this path. Uh huh. Did you read that last time you got from that in San Francisco? Like you read it a month ago? Um, I didn't get it from anybody in San Francisco. In California, you were at? Yeah. Oh, anyway. I think I found it. I was using it in a walking meditation I did there. Anyway, the second line, when it says, Where's the danger is not me? Mm hmm. Is that trying to say that the anger shouldn't be me? No, it's just saying the anger is not me. Like we feel, we have that's the emotion that's going through us at the time, but that doesn't define who we are. A lot of times we think it does. If we have a strong emotion that we feel often, we begin to identify with it. 
Like, I'm an angry person, so that's just who I am. And so we take it on as just a characteristic of our, part of our identity. And so this is reminding us that it's, it's not who we are. It's an emotion. We're capable of lots of, lots of difficult emotions, lots of powerful emotion, powerful emotions. So which the, this is where the points that the Buddha was always teaching come in. One, one, we're being aware, we're recognizing that the anger is present. So that recognition is really important. A lot of times we don't want to acknowledge that. You know, it's, no, I'm not angry. You know how you can be sniping at someone for a whole day and then they call you on it. Well, what are you angry about? I'm not angry. Very passive aggressive, but I'm not angry. <laughs> you know, we can, we, we can, we're feeling that anger, but we don't want to admit it. And we may not even see it ourselves. So the first thing he's asking us to do is recognize it. I know as I breathe in, I know anger is here. It's just here. Breathing out, I know the anger is not me. So it's an emotion, but it doesn't define us. It's not part of us. It's, it's that, that no self. So all these other ang- emotions are conditioned, right? They come from something. Something happens and it, and it, that emotion comes up in us. So it's not who we are because it's impermanent. We know it's impermanent. Breathing in again, I know anger is unpleasant. So we're recognizing one of the qualities of that emotion. It doesn't feel good. It's not pleasant for us or for the people we're around. Breathing out, I know that feeling will pass. Because we know it's not who we are, we know it will pass. Same way. All other feelings pass, good ones and bad ones, and uh, the same way pain passes. Breathing in, I am calm. Breathing out, I am strong enough to take care of this anger. The last line is what really, uh, I love that last not line. Like, You're just acknowledging, okay, it's here, I recognize it, I know it's not me, I feel, I know it's unpleasant, but I can be calm because I know I'm strong enough to take care of it. So that's that feeling of confidence. Like it feels terrible right now, but I can be calm because I know I can get through it. So... Just close your eyes and let's do it just for a few rounds of breathing. Breathing in, I know anger is here. Breathing out, I know the anger is not me. Breathing in, I know anger is unpleasant. Breathing out, I know that feeling will pass. Breathing in, I am calm. Breathing out, I am strong enough to take care of this anger. Now see if you can do it on your own for the next three breathing cycles. So go ahead and when you want to open your eyes. So can you remember all the parts? Okay, the the first one is, okay, we're breathing in first. I know anger is here. What's another emotion someone worked with? Anxiety. That's a good one. That's a universal one. 
Okay, I know anxiety is here. I know that anxiety is not me. It doesn't define me. Breathing in, I know anxiety is unpleasant. And I know that anxiety will pass. Breathing in, I am calm. Breathing out, I am strong enough to take care of this anxiety. So try it when you find yourself walking somewhere and you have a little time or try it. I can I can also print it up and I'll put I'll print out copies and put them on the But I think it holds so many of the Buddhist teachings just in those what is it it's four one two it's only three sets it's three breaths and it talks it's 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 talking about our confidence and working with the Buddha's teachings, with the, those principles, and dealing with difficult emotions, which is what we're always, always dealing with, right? Difficult or powerful. Sometimes we are swept away, you know, with uh, uh, love or something that's, you know, hap- happy, uh, very passionate emotions are difficult too you know they're not that's not that equanimity that we're kind of working towards but we need to know that we can we can have those great feelings of happiness or love or um, the real high high feelings not just the difficult ones, but we can know that those are difficult sometimes, that those come and go. So if we, if we think, I have to feel this, this uh, exalted high on top of the world feeling all the time, then it becomes a painful emotion, right? It will quickly become difficult. It's because we can't sustain it. You know, if we're in love with somebody, they will eventually do something the wrong way, you know, one too many times, they will eventually not be, like, perfect all the time. And so if we don't, if we can't, like, be okay with that, then we know we're in for trouble. So I think just in these three breaths, we're talking about uh, no, no self and impermanence and uh, dukkha, suffering, so I think it's really a nice way to, to, it's a good mantra. And if you're doing walking meditation, that can be what you're using for the, for your time walking. We're paying attention to our, to our, the movement of our feet through space. But you can, you can use something like that that you can say, uh, as you're walking or sitting. So now the rest of the time, 10, 12 minutes, we can talk about precepts. (laughs) You knew it was coming. (laughs) And I hope all of you have seen, we have a really big group taking the precepts this year, so it's wonderful. But we have, I I put uh, set dates for four different hour and a half classes. You know, you have to take a class and the class not only goes over all your questions, but it'll tell you so you're reassured about what we'll do that day and what you're supposed to wear and, you know, all that stuff. That's, that's what ends up making people more nervous than anything else, is if they're dressed appropriately. It really doesn't matter, but, you know, you want to be, you want to be comfortable and be dressed like, uh, kind of like everybody else. So if you, if you, I have a lot of these little sheets on the precepts table. You can pick it up and you can look at your calendars and uh, see if there, which dates and time is good for you. Just one, not all four. 
But that's when you can come with your questions and we'll talk about, I'll, sh I'll give you a sample copy of the script that we use and do uh, tell you everything that will make you feel completely uh, calm <laughs> about it. No, no, you won't need your anger mantra or your anxiety mantra. Um, so please look at that. They're in October and September, and then we'll all be ready for October the 12th is precept. So if you can't make any of the four of these, then talk to me about that, and we'll set up a time when you, you know, we'll set up a... Mm -hmm. Are we still going to have the Monday and Wednesday meditation? Or... The regular meditation? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, we, 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 this, this is a special class. I've tried to make it be um, close in time to the either, either the Wednesday meditation or the Saturday meditation. But we'll have the regular meditation service, but this, the, the class will be um, either before or after on Saturday. So there could very easily be uh, some difficulties in your schedule, but I'm happy to add other times I can talk to people. So there's also a handout. I, I'm not giving it out tonight, but... Um, Oh, it's upside down. And it just has all of the, uh, in, in Pali and English, all of the precepts. And so if you want to start practicing your Pali, you can uh, have this just to let it, ag you can agonize over it. But for those classes, we'll also, um, you'll, we will also practice it's very easy. You don't have to worry about the poly. We do it phonetically, and it'll be simple. Um, so what? it's been a long time since we've talked about the precepts. So does anybody have questions about it? Have you been practicing the precepts? <clears throat> or have, you, have, you, uh, have any of you, do you have a way that you put it into your daily intentions? or put it into your day somehow, like a, more of a recognition of the precepts? Well, you can do that, even now. <laughs> if you've taken the precepts before, it's good to remember these precepts because this they're what, remember, the precepts are what you can go back to if things are not feeling right in your life. Like if you're having to do the anger mantra, walking mantra, too many, too much of the time, then you might want to go back and look at the precepts and just see how am I doing? These are the, this, these are the training guidelines that I have. And there's a reason that these precepts are what they are. We were, I was talking with somebody who had to leave, but we were talking, uh, he, he was saying, you know, if you, if you're a Christian, you think of the, the uh, Beatitudes and the, the also the Ten Commandments, and his comment was, you know, when we when we think about those, we're doing especially the Ten Commandments, we're we're obeying things because we're doing it for God, we're doing it because you know that's what God told us to do, but with the precepts, we're we're honoring the precepts because that's part of our. Uh, what we're giving ourselves, we're we're giving that those precepts and living with with those, letting the, those be our guidelines for how we're living by day by day, and so we're giving that to ourself first of all and most importantly. So there's nobody we have to go to if we break one of the precepts. Um, that's we're we're on our own with that. I mean, if you, if you have a good friend and you need to talk about something with somebody, you can do that. But there's no confession. There's no, um, oh, I thought he was raising his hand. I was going to call on him. There's no, <laughs> there's no, um, you're not, you are responsible for yourself. 
And if you should find that you're having trouble with one of the precepts, you can always come and talk to a monastic, a monastic or a noble friend. But it's, it's something good for you to just work with and think about. Why am I having trouble with this one? If you're killing people or something, you should probably come and talk to somebody. <laughs> but most of the precepts are just kind of, you, you'll find more and more that they're about your daily life. Are you being kind to people? Are you, are you speaking with kindness to people? Are you, are you respecting life? Are you uh, not taking things that, that don't belong to you? Um, and I think the fifth one, are you finding yourself becoming uh, heedless and careless because of your use of whatever your preferred drug or intoxicant is? And it doesn't have to be just alcohol or drugs. I think that one we can expand a bit and think of what, what we do. You know, we talked about this early on. We don't want to expand the precepts so they're global because we'll never feel, especially with, <laughs> with the changing climate, we'll never feel like we're doing enough. So the precepts have to be about our life and how we're living our day-to-day -day life. We, we, aren't, we, we can't include, we have to save a, spe a species of an endangered animal. You know, it, it has to be how we are working in our daily life. So we have to, we have to keep the precepts really grounded and about our life today and tomorrow and the next day. That's why it's good when you wake up in the morning or when you go to bed at night to, uh, to even, you can memorize the precepts in English. And just in the morning you can say, today I intend to be kind, I intend to use right speech, I intend to, be, uh, to treat other people with respect, I intend to stay, uh, keep my mindfulness. You know, you can get it down to just the most basic, fewest number of words you want, but that, that gives you something just to, okay, that's not a lot to ask, right, for one day. And during the day, you may see yourself, uh, say, develop road rage or train rage or whatever, whatever you kind of rage you, you have. Um, and you can, you can stop and think, wait a minute, am I being kind to myself? Or is that, am I being, using right speech with the car next to me? Um, you can, you can, you'll start finding that you refer back to those precepts that you just recited in the morning or that you turned into those intentions. So it puts it a little closer to you. So it's not just something you do once a year, but it's something that you start connecting to how you're living your life. And I think that's when we can get more value from the precepts, because there's a reason we have them. And a lot of the Buddha's teachings, a lot of his teachings, maybe the majority of his teachings, are about those qualities that we want to have for ourselves. Just being a good person. It's not rocket science. Like most of what the Buddha taught was about being a good person. And that's hard to, it's harder to do than we think, right? Because when he talks about right speech, it, it starts being about a lot of things. Is it the right time to say something? Is it kind? You know, are we, are we upset when we say it? Then it's probably not going to come out right. Are we in the right place? Um, you know, there are all kinds of considerations. And is our speech, are we, are we shouting? Are we being, using harsh words? Are we, um, just, are we saying things that aren't true? Or are we spending too much of our time just chattering? So these are all things that become bigger things when we look at how our life is going, how our lives are going. And uh, I think we, we, lose, we lose touch with that because we just get caught up in being how we've always been. 
Or, like sometimes by owning certain emotional states <clears throat> um, and just saying, well, this is how I am. Uh, I, I was in a store today, and I'm sure it was a it was a volunteer working, but she was one of the loudest people I have ever, not ever heard, but in a small shop. She was very loud and kind of talking, and it was it created an atmosphere that was really unpleasant when there's even nice music in the background. But this woman was just so caught up in her, whoever she was talking to, and her voice was so loud that I don't think she had any idea, because she was very cheerful, I don't think she had any idea that she was um, maybe stressing people out. Maybe I was the only one that was stressed out. But uh, I don't think, and, and if someone had called her on it, it would have probably really hurt her. But then she would have thought, well, she could have responded saying, well, I'm just a loud person. That's just my nature. You know, that's who I am. So she could have, you might have, with the best intentions, wanted, want to tell her, maybe be a little quieter when you're working in the store. But um, she may just see, oh, well, I'm loud. That's my nature. And would maybe never be able to hear that feedback because she just... That was who she was. That's why we say this anger is not who I am. It's not mine. So even certain characteristics that we have that we may not know were kind of annoying to other people or um, not right speech, it we can let go of that has to be who I am. Now, the truth, maybe she's really deaf, and I just didn't pick up on that, but it was... <laughs> I think she could hear. I think she just was full of herself. But um, that, that's just an example. But try to, try to let the precepts become real to you. Try to practice. Take one of them, even if five are too many for you to handle. Take one precept and see if every day you can uh, think about that precept in the morning. And then see if during the day, anything in your day relates to that precept, that guide, that training guideline. So there might be something, see if there's something in your life that you can relate back to that precept. So any, anybody have a question before we call it a night? Okay. Thank you very much.